Hi everybody, Jimmy Mix here and today I want to show you a workflow to get better skin tones in DaVinci Resolve on our almost neutral looking image. So let's rock the intro! Okay, here's a common workflow to get better skin tones in DaVinci Resolve. At first, I don't want to bore you with a video about 20 minutes, so I decided to do it fast forward. So it's a little bit compressed, but I will slow down the speed at the important points. I will create an almost neutral look, so you will not see how to get a cinematic look here in this tutorial, okay? The first node is used for noise reduction if necessary, and the second node is used for exposure correction. What I usually do is to adjust my gamma and my contrast and adjusting the pivot point for the contrast and increasing the saturation. Third node is for increasing saturation again if necessary. The fourth node is my background and the skin node on top as a layer node. The first thing on my skin node is to use the power window to control where the skin tones are on the vectorscope. If I highlight my selection only, the skin tones are shown in the vectorscope. And what I mostly do is a first adjustment by using the offset or the U. Now I start up building my qualifier. For me, it works best using the U, saturation and luminance in this order until I'm satisfied with my qualifier. A slight denoise and a clean black should always be applied to get better results on skin tone qualifiers. I do it very roughly without separating the mouth and eyes, uh, so we will see a lot of red in the scopes. And if you want to know more about to, how to get good qualifications for skin tones, I put a link to a tutorial I already did in the description and on the upper right corner. Uh, mostly I do a bit of blur too and if you increase the in and out radius you can yeah adjust it a bit more how much information you get in or out to this qualifier. I also use a low, mid and high separation in my vectorscope. That shows me in which area the respective skin tones are. Here, for example, too much magenta in the highs, in the mid from orange to magenta and in the low, mainly orange and yellow. So what I do now is to adjust my lift again a bit more to the bluish magenta direction. And let me look. Okay. And on the high, I push it more to the yellowish side to get a bit more rid of this magenta shift. And if I turn it on and off, not a bit more, just a bit. Always do very, very small adjustments, very small steps. Never, never push it too far. Your image will look crazy and not natural. And again, choose the vector scope, separating the low, mid and high ranges to control your adjustments and repeat you're to adjusting the primaries and if you look it's it looks okay until now i'm i'm okay with it now i know which part i have to adjust in which direction the gain in the opposite direction from magenta to get rid of this magenta shift in the gamma i push it a bit more to the orange and now let's have a first look at it for controlling what tonality you really have is to increase the saturation just for control. Then turn it down again until it looks okay. What I also do often is to lower my curve a bit in the mid-range. This compresses my colors a bit more and gives a bit more punch. And again, watch the image. Still looks too magenta and bluish, but if you watch the image, you will recognize that it's cold, she's wearing a cap, and there's no sunlight, only neon light, the skin has to look right in the image. That's the key for the great skin tones. Read the image. How is the lightning? Temperature? What's the contrast? And so on. So I want to see that skin more cold, more in contrast to the background. With this warm orange light inside the train, that will give me more color contrast and let me let my subject more pop out. 
and I will give the skin a slight more contrast, just a little bit, adjusting the pivot point and saturation again and bringing it in a bit more orange on my gamma. And again, you know, watch the image and yeah, this looks okay to me. But I'm not so satisfied with the color contrast. And in the skin, I need a bit more orange in the mids. Therefore, I adjust my first note again a bit just to bring in a bit more warmth by pushing my gamma. And now I have to adapt my skin qualifier to this change too. I do it a bit roughly in Seiko for this tutorial. And finally, I bring up my power window to isolate the skin from the rest of the image. And then I track the window in this case, no problem and very easy. Just a quick control after tracking and then again checking my skin tones. And as always, checking your skin tones on the vector scope um, and again separate the low, the mid and high and check where the colors stays. And by the way, if you check your skin tones in the parade, you can also see that the highs have more red and blue and the lows have less blue and much more red and green should never be a dominating color in skin tones. I try to bring in a bit more bluish shades in the shadows using the lock curves, not too heavy and really just sometimes try to push the slider way too high just to see what else comes in there. That sometimes helps to get a better feeling for the shades. Here it was too much cyan and I decreased it a bit. And again doing some more adjustments in my lift and yeah this pushes me more to the bluish part. Now it, it, it doesn't look so good. No, 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 no. Um, let's do it the gamma a bit more to the orange. Uh, I, I want to I wanna see more, more warms. And now we have a very good looking tonal range in the vectorscope. From yellow to red magenta, but don't forget we already have the lips included in our qualification. So that's okay. Switching the node on and off, watch the image. Try to read the image. That's what professional colorists do all the time, reading the scopes and the image. And by the way, I don't know which camera was used for this shot, but this greenish bandings here in the skin makes me suspect that is, is a GH5. Sometimes in Vlog in combination with 10-bit you got this color bandings and it's really hard to correct this. Normally I have to adjust this part separately in special qualifiers but in this tutorial I will skip this. And now you can see I have way too much green way too much greenish tint now so I have to fix this again only in the primaries and check my image again just to see yeah that looks way better and finally i will try to bring in more saturation in the skin not too much because i want to get natural skin and that's it now you can follow my next steps to finish my look and again in the fast forward. Just a note for separating the subject with a bit more contrast and sharpening and an outer note to lower the curve a bit and bringing in more saturation for more color contrast. This will make my subject pop out. Then a note for a slight vignette and that's almost it. As a final adjustment again a slight more contrast by using the curve. Here look at the histogram behind the curve. I set the points to lower the upper mids and increasing the upper highs. And finally film grain. Let me show you something. I mostly increase the film strength because it gives me more sharping look sharp looking image because this introduces a bit more shades. Just look at the scopes. If I switch the node on and off, can you see the difference? Let me show you how this works. Look at the scopes. Can you see it? Wait, I increase the strength a bit more. See it? Yeah, and that's it. We are done. 
Okay, and if you want to see more content like this, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. And thanks for watching and listening. You all a great time. Bye.